Hello, hello. Thank you guys for tuning in to our real estate webinar this morning. Sorry, we had a little bit of technical difficulties. That's okay. Facebook Live, indirect. You know, this is KJ Johnson. Make sure you guys hit that like button. All right, so we're going to get started today. Again, my name is KJ Johnson. I'm a realtor with Realty Executives. Been in the business for 16 years. So the purpose of this webinar is an informational webinar designed to help you in the infancy stage of the home buying process. Uh, for first-time home buyers, you have a book here, uh, f Finding the Dream of Your Home and Without Overpricing. Um, we give these to our first-time buyers with our initial consultation. It's a great read. Um, in this particular seminar, we're going to be talking about selling and buying because you know, you can't really discuss one without the other. So I want to just, just, just touch on both aspects today. So we're going to talk about some programs. We're going to talk about credit, the home buying process, the selling process, the whole enchilada, okay? So uh, some of you are out there. Um, it's uh, KJ Johnson. I have two pages. One has 5,000 uh, people on it. The other one doesn't. So um, if you could uh, send a friend's request to the other um, page that I have, and um, I'll appreciate it. Okay, so um, we want to get started. Is that is that correct? Okay, can they still see me? Okay, all right, good. All right, guys. So, um, where should we start? Where should we, we, we begin? All right, um, for the first time home buyer, I'm going to suggest that you sit down with a loan officer. Okay. A lot of times you start this process and you really need to try to figure out where you are or sometimes you're doing it on your own and you're not in this alone. We're here for you, okay? But if you want to take the guesswork, okay, out of exactly what you need to do in order for you to be successful, you have to sit down with a loan person and they can sit down and pull your credit and it can go over all the aspects of the home buying process and even in some instances provide a blueprint for you, okay, to, to, to be successful in terms of your, your credit and stuff, okay? So they can take your, your, your credit, run it through their internal uh, simulator. The simulator will tell them everything that you need to do to qualify, which takes the guesswork out of it. Okay, now we have a, a credit repair uh, company that we work with. Uh, our system was um, designed for the first time home buyer. Uh, There's some companies out there that sign you up for credit repair, and their purpose is to keep you into some type of long, drawn out residual income situation. But we want to sell you a house. Okay, so our credit repair program was designed for the first time buyer. Uh, based off of years of experience, uh, what lenders are looking for, what underwriters are looking for, how to boost your score fast. But we're just going to just touch briefly on a couple of things you can do. Uh, first of all, you can pay your um, credit cards down to $10 or 5%. That's going to change your utilization rate, okay? That's going to change your utilization rate, okay? So, in it, which, in it, which in turn will help your score, okay? The next thing you want to do is uh, get two secured credit cards, okay? Get two secured credit cards. When you get those credit cards, charge a $10 balance on those, okay? Don't max them out, okay? And then you can get added to a seasoned credit card as an authorized user, okay? Those are just some preliminary things you can do uh, without pulling your credit and doing a complete needs analysis. Those are just some things that can kind of help you, you know, as you're going along, all right? So if you want to buy, you want to get started, that's where you want to start, okay? We can absolutely help you uh, through that process. You're not alone. Don't try to do it all by yourself, okay? Um, so with that being said, uh, we're going to segue into uh, the, the preparing your home for sale, okay? Uh, the first-time buyer uh, in today's buyer is actually looking for a house that's already fixed up with new construction that's on a rise, with rehab that's on a rise, even in the middle of the pandemic. You know, we're writing contracts and seeing – eight, nine, 10, 11 contracts on one particular house 
these houses are fixed up. So you really want to turn your house into a product so that the first-time buyer can connect with it. So we're going to go over some things for those of you who are selling and then buying. Um, you want to um, get your home. Uh, you know, well, let's just go over some questions that's normally asked. Should I get my home appraised? A lot of people ask me, that. should I get my home appraised? You can get your home appraised. However, that appraisal is no good to the buyer that writes a contract on your house. So if you want to just gauge where your value is, a lot of times a, a, an experienced real estate agent such as myself and my staff, we can do a competitive market analysis uh, that will give you the value or the estimated value of your home so you don't necessarily need to get an appraisal, but you absolutely can. Um, some sellers ask, should I get a home inspection? Absolutely. You can get a home inspection on your house, and that will identify any latent defects, and you can address those, but just know that just because you actually get a home inspection that another inspector may come and um, find new items or something different, okay? And also, it puts you in a situation where you have to disclose all of that to your buyer on your disclosure disclaimer statement when you sign your listing agreement, okay? Um, so appealing to the first-time buyer, uh, your house should be a product. Your home should be a product. It's like Pepsi, it's like Coke, like Lexus, BMW, uh, Kia. They are products. People like the product, and they patronize you for that, okay? So when you're going to put your home for sale, you have to turn it into that product, that one wow factor that people will just w w want to buy your house. They want to partner with you. They want to write an offer on it. And here's some really important things to look for. Um, when you're when you're when you're getting your home for sale and catering to the first time buyer, is you want to declutter. A buyer want to see themselves in your property. Okay, so declutter. Okay. Uh, in some instances, you can you can rent out a storage bin. Okay, um, and, and just take any of your access items and put them in a the storage bin. Try to make your house look as less lived in as possible. You know, you want to be you want your neat. You want your closets to be neat. You want your kitchen to be nice. You want your house to be clean through and through. You want your house to look like a model home or, like I said, barely lived in, okay? Um, you know, staging is really important, okay? Um, you may want to consider hiring a stager or, you know, again, you know, you, if you want to do it yourself, just look up on look on YouTube for different colors and how to take your existing property and and not, um, you know, spend a whole lot of money for a stager, but take your existing property and how to change things around, maybe add some pillows, maybe add some pictures, maybe remove some items. Uh, some fresh paint is always good. Fresh paint, fresh pictures. Um, Plug-ins, the house is warming when you come to the house. It smells good as soon as you come in. It says a lot uh, to the buyer that, you know, when you come into a home and, it, and the house actually smells good. Um uh, curb appeal, making sure your grass and your lawn is cut, planting flowers, uh, putting down some fresh mulch, trimming your hedges, um, that's that, painting your front door. Uh, all of those things are inviting to a buyer when they come to your house in addition to all the other things that we're talking about. Okay, And making your property available to show in less than an hour. Sometimes people get a house online and... They, they, I want a, I want a two-hour notice. I want a twenty-four-hour notice. I want a five-hour notice. You know, an agent and a, and a buyer is just going to move on to the next property. So make your home available in an hour or less, so thirty minutes or less would be better. But you know that when you get your house on the market, you you have to have an, an exit plan, uh, something to do for the day, something to do for the weekend. Uh, you know, it, it is an uncomfortable situation when you have a lot of people coming in on your home. So maybe not being home for a couple of hours to allow them the freedom to be able to look at your property is always good because sometimes I'm out with clients and I may have a list of houses and then they have a list their own. And if your home is not available readily, or at least by the time I complete my list, then we'll just move on to a home that is available. So making your home available, okay, curb appeal, plug-ins, fresh paint, staging, running the storage bin, decluttering, creating a product, making your house that, that must-see, that must-have property is really important, all right? So that's going to uh, that's gonna conclude the, the seller's portion so far, okay? Um, we're going to go into um, the home buying process. It's really important that 
when you're um, going through this process that you, you know, you do your homework, you do your due diligence. When you start this um, process, uh, you have two people to come out to ex- uh, the, the, um, the woodwork. The first one is the HDTV expert, okay? Shout out to all the HDTV experts out there. <laughs> <laughs> they're they're with you uh, doing the whole process. They're giving you information that's really not relevant to you and your situation. So you really have to make sure you do your own due diligence so that as you're um, going through this process, you're making an informed decision. All right. So if you're paying rent, let's talk about rent for a moment. If you're paying $1,500 in rent and, and you've rented for 15 years, that's $270,000. So if you're on the fence about buying a house now, you should be off. Now, rent is $1,500 is cheap depending on where you live. Anyone in Anne Arundel County and PG County, you're probably upward of eighteen, nineteen to 2000 or if you're in certain parts of even Baltimore County. So these numbers are really moderate numbers. But if you look at that as a whole, $1,500, 15 years, $270,000. You could have put it in in your own mortgage. So if you're on the fence, let's get you off the fence today. Okay. Why you want to purchase? It's an investment. Okay. You get a product of home ownership control. You don't have to worry about, you know, your, your, your rent going up and down. You know, it's, you know, sometimes when that notice come out to renew and uh, that uh, <laughs> and your rent goes up, you, you, you're not happy. You're not a happy camper. So it gives you a sense of control and fixed cost. Gives you a sense of accomplishment. You know, buying a house is, gives you a real sense of accomplishment. You know, it's a 30-year commitment. And um, some people work their whole life to do that. Just like you do when you get a degree, you get married, you start a family, you buy a mortgage. That's all a part of the, uh, the accomplishments that we want to achieve in our society. Okay? Tax benefit. You know, you can write off a portion of your mortgage. Okay? Um, it's, it's, it's tax deductible. And then it gives you a sense of stability. All right, being stable and not have to move and things of that nature. All right, um, uh, here's a couple of tips that'll help you uh, research grants and home buyer programs that are available in your neighborhood. Okay, we're going to talk about some of them today. Don't rely on someone else's experience to guide you. All right, sometimes we we really want to have some information, and when we don't, we gravitate to the next best person that may be a person who never bought a home but watch a lot of tv <laughs> or maybe purchased a home a long time ago or maybe they had a horrible experience buying a home and they're like i would never do it you know sometimes people get dwarfed into an experience like now, hold if on, you wait a minute <laughs> hold just one minute <laughs> hold on <what? laughs> so if you had an experience with a roof say fans they had an experience with uh, someone that had a, a bad situation with a roof. So when they talk to you, they're going to talk about a roof. If their experience with the home was leaks, then they're going to talk to you about leaks or electrical. And all of those things are situations that happen, but we're going to go over scenarios on how to resolve those issues. So don't let that be a deterrent. All right? Make your own decisions. Sometimes we're going through this process with a buyer, and guess what? The HDTV expert is with them. All right? They're, walk, they're walking around the house, and they're trying to Give them all this secondhand information. But it's important that you make your own decision because your mortgage payment is going to show up like an unwanted house guest if you follow the direction of someone else. Okay? Research home prices in your area. Really important. If you're if you're paying seventeen hundred dollars in rent and you're in a two you know, two bedroom town home and you want to buy a uh two bedroom town home. Your, your rent is not going to go down to $1,300. <laughs> In most cases, it's going to go up. And their lifestyle changes. If you go from a two-bedroom to a three-bedroom, that's a lifestyle change. If you go from a, a three-bedroom to a with a garage, that's a lifestyle change. If you go from a, 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 um, a, 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 a town home to a single-family home, that's a lifestyle change. A single-family home with a one-car garage, two-car garage. You're, you're All of those are lifestyle changes. Person. Okay, and each lifestyle change can increase your monthly obligation by 10 to 15 percent. All right. So if you're going from a two bedroom townhome to a single family two car garage, don't expect to pay the same amount. It's going to be up or down uh, by 10 to 15 percent per each lifestyle change. Okay, at a bedroom, single family, one car garage, two car garage. So. You, you know, you may be adding six hundred dollars to your bottom line, all right. But it's tax deductible, all right. 
uh, the paperwork you're going to need in uh, most instances, you're going to need your um, last three years tax returns. Okay. You're going to need uh, three months bank statements. You're going to need 30 days worth of pay stubs. You're going to need a profit and loss statement. If you're self-employed, if you're getting child support, we're going to need uh, a letter from child support stating that you get it and that it's court ordered. And if you're self-employed, we're going to need a profit and loss statement. All right, so this is some of the documentation that uh, we're going to need to get you pre-approved, okay? All right, um, <clears throat> who are some of the parties involved in your um, process? Okay, so you have your realtor, all right? You have a listing agent who works for the seller, all right? You have a mortgage lender, you have a builder, all right? You have an appraiser, a termite inspector. You have a, a home inspector, a surveyor. Okay, home, a, a surveyor is going to make sure they do, uh, do an assessment of the meets and bounds of your house. Okay, an insurance, comp insurance agent or title company, they're going to make sure that they give you clear title to the house so that there's no liens or encumbrances on it. Okay, anything that can hinder you from selling or refinancing or dispositioning your home to a family member. Okay, um, but let's go back a little bit. We're going to talk about uh, your agent and a listing agent. Let's talk about agency for a moment. Okay. Uh, an agency is the agreement between a mortgage company, uh, I'm sorry, a brokerage, a real estate company, and a realtor. That creates an agency agreement or an agency relationship. So you have a buyer's agency relationship and you have a seller's agency relationship. So it's really important that you sit down with a realtor and interview a realtor and establish that relationship early so that as you're going through this maze of home ownership or even selling a home, you don't have to rely on an HGTV expert or someone who has outdated information as a source of information for you, all right? Because your your realtor is going to have the updated information relevant to whatever experience you're going through as it pertains to that situation, okay? Up to date. And if they don't have up to date, then maybe you need to fire her and then interview another realtor, all right? So when you're... Look, going to open houses or even you're visiting new construction when you go to those establishments and you do an open house you can create a agency relationship it's called presumed a agency relationship just by going into the house and creating a, a particular dialogue okay and um so it's important that if you don't have a realtor, just interview one or two and, and, and sit down and say, well, you know, I'm going to partner with you. And if you have to change realtors later, that's good. But to go into a situation blind without a realtor talking to you in any situation or consulting with you is really not good. A few years ago, I helped a, 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 a young lady buy a home, and it was in um, Heightsville, Maryland. It was a new construction house, and they told her she needed $21,000 to get into a house, $21,000. So she had attended one of my first time home buyer workshops. So um, uh, we met her at the builder and we researched the, the programs that she qualified for. And after just re, um, you know, revamping the deal, we changed it. They were only giving her $12,000 in closing cost help. So we got the builder to give her $21,000 in closing cost help. All right. Same twenty one or twenty two thousand dollars that they said that she needed, we made them give that to her, <laughs> and then we were able to help her find a program, and um, she only needed sixty six hundred dollars at the settlement table. Now that's a big difference, but if you don't know, then you're not going to be able to utilize any knowledge that you don't have. So if you don't know the right questions to ask, I always say I listen for the no, so I know where the yeses are. So when I go to a builder, I listen to everything they say they won't do and then use what they will do for your benefit. So if you're looking for new construction or if you're visiting an open house and you don't have a realtor, say, Kate, my, my realtor is KJ Johnson. His number is 443-744-5280. So at that juncture, uh, if you get into a situation, you have someone that can represent you, that can help you along the way. All right? All right. Uh, let's talk about negotiating for a moment. All right? Uh, a lot of times this is where um, your um, your deal can fall apart real fast during negotiating, okay? So we're going to use a scenario, all right? Let's just say you're pre-approved for, um, let's just say for the sake of argument, you're pre-approved for uh, $300,000, all 
All right, we're going to use that as a scenario. You're approved for $300,000. Now, everybody say, I'm approved for three hundred, but I don't want to use that much, okay? And let's just say you're looking for a three-bedroom, one full bath, one half bath uh, townhome in Columbia, okay? All right, this, was, this is what you're looking for. We go online, and we pull it up. And we find you six houses. We find you ten houses that you like. Out of ten, you like six. After you go see the six, you're down to like four. And then you think about it and you say, you know what? I actually need a second bathroom. Okay? I need a, I need, I need a, another bathroom because I tell you, my son, he goes in there. He shaves. He put hair all over the place. I mean, I just can't take it. This is real mother talk. I mean, this is real things mothers tell me. My, my son's his shaving. He's leaving his hair in my sink. is disgusting. I want him to have his own bathroom. <laughs> His own bathroom, right? So we go online, and then for the same $300,000, we find a different set of homes. And from that set of homes, you like seven. And out of seven, you want to go see five. And then out of the five, you like three. And then you think about it again. You say, you know what? I want to have a fourth bedroom. So not only do I not want to have his hair in my sink, I am tired of listening to that trap music and there's Lil Wayne music. All hours of the night. So I need to put him in the basement so I can have some peace because I got to get up in the morning and I have to go work. <laughs> I got to work in the morning, you know. So uh, then, you, so now you want a four-bedroom, two-four-bath, one-half-bath home in Columbia. And you started off with $300,000, but you didn't want to spend 300000 But you're starting to add these lifestyle changes that are going to get you up to $300 and beyond. So just to say, out of for the sake of argument, we pull up five houses out of five. You like one, and now you're ready to write an offer. Okay, now we, this is where the negotiating comes in. Okay, so um, because you don't have a lot of inventory, some of the instances that we talked about before, you had five houses, you like four houses, you like. So in those instances, you can be very passive, where you offer eight to ten thousand dollars off the sales price of the house. Okay, or maybe five to seven thousand dollars off if you want to be passive. So you got very passive, and you have passive. But we always ask for closing cost help. I always ask for six percent. Now, sometimes in the industry standard is three percent. Um, I'm able to get six in in some cases, but in certain areas, uh, they don't. I call them the three percenters. They only want to do three percent no matter what, and that's just not a, a standard number. That's a number that. The industry has said that anything more than 3% is like blasphemy, but it's not. We get it all the time, okay? Um, so here's where you want to be aggressive. When you don't have a lot of inventory and you don't have a lot of options, and in this scenario, it's one house that you like, so you want to be passive-aggressive or you want to be aggressive, okay? And in being aggressive, that means maybe even offering over the list price and asking for closing cost help to try to compensate for the fact that you do need closing cost help, especially if they're going to be in a multiple offer situation. It's going to be in a situation where it's multiple offers or lots of offers on the property, then you may want to go over the sales price. And, and, and you know, it's, in this scenario, it's um, 300000 So let's just say on a $300,000 house, you're going to need about uh, twelve five in closing cost help. Okay? So you may want to offer the seller $305,000 and then ask for ask for the $12,000, okay? Kind of meet them halfway, all right? Now, some people say, KJ, well, why would I want to do that? I don't want my mortgage payment to go up. Well, listen, that's $5,000 amortized over 30 years. So for the seller, that's real money. But for you, it's $6 per thousand. So say this with me. $6 is the new thousand. Type it in on Facebook. $6 is the new thousand. So when you start to hear someone talk about a thousand dollars for you, it's for you it was for you it's six dollars. Okay? It's just six dollars. Six dollars is the new thousand. Okay? Up or down. So when you start to hear numbers like the seller wants to increase the house by two thousand or five thousand, for you it's six dollars. Six to seven dollars. Now, by the time you go to uh, Panera Bread and you get two soups, a salad, and a smoothie, that's like, what, 80 bucks? <laughs> you know, so it's not my money. It's your money. But, you know, it, it's, it's well worth it to make sure you can um, get a lot of mo- keep as much money in your pocket as possible. 
All right, it's really important, you know, and um, it's really, really important, okay? Miss Smith, I appreciate that. So um, <clears throat> that's where you come into play as far as negotiating, okay? Now, again, what are some of the steps that you want to follow as it pertains to um, the process? Again, sit down with a loan officer. Find out what you qualify for. Okay, really important. Then partner with a realtor. Don't jump on Zillow and Realtor.com and looking for houses. Start with finding your money, your resources, and your strategy. Okay, and by the way, if you want to search for homes, go to www.kjjohnsonteam.com. Those are real listings there. They're not fake listings. You know, some of these companies create these fake listings. They're not up to date because they want to get your information and they want to... Um, sell your leads back to realtors like myself so they'll get a house and put it on market that's not available only to try to get you to sell your home that is on the market so go to my website again www.kjjohnsonteam.com if you want to search for properties it's on the screen um, for you to see all right so again start with a loan officer then partner with a realtor once you're under contract you're going to do a termite inspection and a home inspection now uh, surviving the home inspection uh, for the seller and buyer can be difficult. And I want to talk about that briefly because that's where deals can actually fall apart. So let's just say, for the sake of argument, you do a home inspection. And on the home inspection, they find um, water stains in the attic. Very common, okay? So you got water stains in your attic, all right? You, um, um, you have uh, a leak at the sink, Okay, you have a leak in your sink. As a matter of fact, you have a leak in three sinks. All right. Uh, upon inspection of the property, he noticed that the hot water heater is leaking around uh, some of the, the, the fixtures. So you got a hot water heater that's leaking. Okay. All right. So um, let's just say he plugs in the the, the, the socket gauge and the the, the the sockets aren't working in all of the rooms okay so now you have electrical all right and then let's just say he go into the basement and in the basement he see this water stains around the border so now you have water stains now some of you are probably like you know what i'm out of this house already but <laughs> that i assure you <laughs> that there are things that and measures you can take to get you through this all right so these are real-life scenarios that I see every day, all right? And this is how we work through those items because someone can, you know, especially if you bring the HDTV expert with you, uh, sometimes you will absolutely find yourself um, wanting to get out of a contract that someone's talking you out of or you're feeling uncomfortable with. So how do we deal with the water stains in the, in the attic? So that's obviously some type of roof issue. Okay, so you ask for a roof certification, ladies and gentlemen, roof certification. This is what a roof certification is. A licensed roofer puts their license on the line. And before they can certify, sometimes it's two years to three years or longer, they have to repair anything wrong with the roof. Anything that's wrong, whether it's missing shingles, whether they need to put a coat of polyurethane on it or boarding or whatever they need to do before they can certify they have to do the necessary repairs okay so their license is on the line so you get a roof certification your hot water heater is leaking you have you know you have three leaks throughout the house it's leaking around the, the um around the hot water heater so maybe you might want to get a plumbing certification just to make sure the plumbing in the house is good okay so now you have water stains in the bottom of the boards of your of the basement, okay? So now you can get a waterproof certification. A waterproof, and I'm going to give a shout-out to Anchor. They're good. If you ever have an issue with waterproofing, Anchor waterproofing is the best. They give you a lifetime warranty, all right? And they're really, really, really good. Um, they're always busy, so they're worth the wait. But they're going to give you a lifetime warranty. So, roof certification, plumbing certification, electrical certification. That's how you get through some 
of the more difficult seasons in your home inspection. So you actually take that information, you put it on what we call a property service, uh, property inspections notice, and that information goes to the seller, and we ask them to fix it, and this is what we ask them for, the appropriate certifications to make you feel comfortable moving forward so you don't inherit someone else's problems, all right? So that's how you get through the home inspection process, all right? You, 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 no one's going to buy a perfect home. I, I've sold a home, it was maybe a year or so ago, maybe two years ago, maybe 18 it was, and it was a brand new house <laughs> out in Akakee. I'm all over the place, y'all. I can be in Hartford County at 3 o'clock, and I can be in Charles County at 6, and that's the truth. So I'm all over the place <laughs> across the state of Maryland uh, serving the community, doing what I do. But anyway, we went to do a uh, home inspection on this new construction property, and <laughs> it the, the the support beam that supported the whole house was leaning, okay, like this. It was just leaning. And we were like, okay, this is a new house. People buy new construction to avoid these issues, but it's unavoidable. Uh, upon further inspection, some of the boarding that they used had termite damage on it. Were there active termites? No, but it were termite damage on it. So you know what that means? We had to still get it treated. In the corner of his really, really beautiful big house in the basement, it was water coming in through the carpet. This is a brand new house. V reputable builder. I do business with them all the time. Never saw this before. It wasn't a situation where it was a builder who I was suspect of. It was a builder I do a lot of business with. But these things happen. Did the house next door have those issues? No. I asked the neighbor. Oh, we never had any problems. Did the house over here have issues? No. This house did. So it's specific to this home. Okay. I, I start knocking on doors. Do, are you guys having any issues <laughs> with water? No. So anything can happen during a home inspection, but we can work through it. Okay, so you get a home inspection. Once you're on the contract, you get an appraisal. They're going to assess the value of the house. And then um, we're going to go back and check the home inspection issues. And once we do that, uh, we're going to schedule a final walkthrough on your property and to check those those issues to make sure they're um, they're corrected. And if you need any money, this is starting to be something that's common now. You may need to wire your money to the um, title company prior to closing. Before we would use a um, a um, check certified funds, but we may need to have you wire the money. Okay. So that's going to be pretty much the home buying process and selling process. So we're going to now talk about uh, some of the grants and the programs out there. See, I'm not going to keep you guys long today. We're getting through this information relatively quick. All right. Now, I want to give a shout out to uh, Parrish Taylor with Allstate in Randallstown. He's one of the sponsors of our um, workshop today. We'll give him a round of applause if we can. Mr. Parrish Taylor. With the uh, all state out there in Ramstown, Maryland, big shout out, big shout out. All right, um, we have Brian Jones um, with Meridian Bank. Uh, he's going to be the um, loan officer that's going to that sponsored this. Uh, let's give him a shout out as well, Brian Jones. Um, if you guys want to apply for your mortgage. Please text me at 443-744-5280. I will send you Mr. Jones's link, and I can you can apply right there, okay? He's going to be able to help you identify programs that you qualify for and get the ball rolling for you. So you can text me at 443-744-5280, and I will send you the link. And don't forget, hit that like button. All right, now... What I want you to do is search on Facebook because I have another page. One page already has 5,000 people. The other one is not quite there. Send me, send me a friend request. I want to be engaged with you. I want to partner with you. Um, we, we create relationships that last a lifetime, long before, long, long after the transaction. All right? So let's hop into some of this, uh, these programs. Okay? So you have the Maryland Mortgage Program. We like to call that program Old Faithful. Okay, it's a lot of um, 
opportunity in that program. They have a couple of different components, 3% down, 4% down. Okay, Mr. Jones will go over all of yeah, that with you in more detail. More Please detail. text me at 443-744-530. Okay. Um, there's FHLB. I will send you Mr. Jones. Okay, FHLB, Federal Home Loan Bank. All right? They can give you anywhere from $5,000 to $7,500, depending on your county. Okay? There's the Chinoa program. Okay? They're going to cover your 3.5% down. Okay? Chinoa is C-H-E-N-O-A. C-H-E-N-O-A, Chinoa Program, okay? All right, so in Baltimore City, we have Live Near near, near Your Work, okay? We have Buying Into Baltimore. We have uh, The Good Neighbor Next Door, okay? Uh, the Community Development Block Grant. Those are all Baltimore City programs, okay? In Howard County, we have the NPI Workforce Grant, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, settlement Down Payment Loan Program, okay, the SDLP, all right? Montgomery County, you have uh, uh, the Mortgage pur- Purchase Program. Sometimes in Montgomery County, you can get up to $40,000, $40,000. Hey, let's get a round of applause on $40,000. <laughs> you know, that's a lot of opportunity uh, for you out there. Now, let me just, I'm going to go over more programs, and I just want to just say I don't want you to get, Totally programmed, and here's what I mean. Sometimes you have programs that will um, run with your mortgage, meaning for 20 or 30 years, you have to pay that. You know, you have to pay that money back. And some programs, after five years or 10 years, that money goes away. So you get a loan for uh, 15 to 20 thousand dollars, and every year a portion of it goes away as long as you stay in the house up until the threshold specified with that program, whether it's five years, seven years, 10 years, 15 years. Those are the programs that I suggest you look into first because that's what I say is really, in essence, free money. But at the end of your mortgage tenure, you have this <laughs> twenty dollars or $30,000 loan and you didn't stack all these because you can stack these programs. Um, again, talk to Mr. Jones and he'll let you know which ones that you can do that with. You don't want to have all these loans stacked up at the end of your mortgage and we could have gotten the seller to pay your closing costs. We could have done a numerous amount of things to save you money that you didn't have to pay back or get you opportunity that you didn't have to pay back. So don't get so programmed that you want to use some people say I want to use every program out there. I mean they and they stack them up to the to the ceiling if they can only to you know when it's time to refinance their house or send their children to college they don't have as much equity as they thought. Okay? So um, just think about that for a moment. Um, but, again, we're going to help you identify what programs you qualify for. Now, if you're selling a house, do you qualify? You won't qualify for all of these, but we can get you 100% financing and 101% financing as long as you sell your home. Now, they used to say that you had to not have a home in your name for three years, that was the whole first-time home buyer rule. Like, if you haven't owned a home in three years, you qualify as a first-time buyer. But now, you can actually just sell your house and qualify for some of these programs right away. Now, that is something that has been a, a phenomenon because we never heard of that. So, if you're selling a house, you want to take advantage of that as quickly as possible, and we would love to help you facilitate that. And again, call me, 443-744-5280, KJ Johnson, your trusted real estate professional on that note, okay? So, um, if you're in Queen Anne's County, you have the Moderately Priced Dwelling Unit Loan Program, okay? In Prince George's County, you have the College Park uh, University Partnership Program, okay? Um, Frederick County, you have the Home Home Buyer Assist Program. So, it's it's dozens of them out there, guys, that, that you can utilize, uh, the Montgomery County is the Mortgage Purchase Program. Miss Camille, shout out to Miss Camille. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, the Mortgage Purchase Program. Okay, that's where you. Uh, that's the one for Montgomery County. Now there are there are more. Okay, so like I said, just let us help you get you pre-approved. Okay, let us find the resources for you, and we will let you know based off of your information which will be whether you're married or single, and some of you have asked this question. We're going to ask you, where do you want to move? 
identify your geographic area, okay, your city, your county, okay? If you're married or single, if you have children under the age of 18, how much your yearly income is? Do you know what your current credit score is? If you can answer those questions, we can narrow your programs down in a fraction of the time. I mean, literally within minutes, we'll know what you qualify for because we do this all the time. Okay? Baltimore County, you have the Dundalk Renaissance Home Buyer Grant, and you have the Settlement Expense Loan Program. Okay? That's in uh, Baltimore County and Dundalk. Okay? Uh, in Columbia, Employees Assist Housing Program. Uh, home purchase program and the open doors program. But again, there are more because you could have ordinances. Say, for instance, if you're, you say, I want to buy in PG County and I want to look in Suitland and I want to look in Bowie, it may be some opportunity in Bowie that's not in Suitland or vice versa. Okay? So narrowing down the county, the city, and the zip code where you want to purchase will dramatically help us identify your opportunity. So don't try to go at it alone. Don't talk to the HGTV expert. Stay off of Google because Google can't tell you anything. (laughs) Call me, your trusted real estate professional, KJ Johnson, 443-744-5280. Okay? Now, that's going to conclude... The first time home buyer and seller uh, webinar for today. Those are the grants that are available. Um, but I do want to hear from you. Give me a call. one 6499 If you have any questions, uh, we definitely want to answer your questions. Um, again, that's one 6499 so we're going to take some calls from you. Uh, and, and the number is on the screen as well. All right? You know, and while we're waiting for calls, I do want to just touch base on uh, just the new construction. A lot of times people, when they do new construction, they don't think they need a realtor. Take a realtor to your new, to, you know, to your new builders with you because it's, it's, it, it's still a new home purchase, and it's still a purchase, and you want to make sure that your interests – is 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 um is protected all right just because they nice and they offer you cookies and soda and you know put your name into this uh hat for a free you know gift card to your favorite restaurant all that's well and dandy but if your interest is not protected if you didn't exhaust all of the opportunity afforded to you what good is any of that just because they're telling you oh we don't have to pay your realtor listen they were going to pay your realtor <laughs> whether you have one or not. All right. So with the fact that you you're not you're not like some people they think that I need to get in good with the listing agent. Or I need to get in good with the builder. When a when a seller lists the property, they take into consideration uh, paying a commission to their realtor, paying a commission to your realtor, right? And um, if you're not really saving anything by not having a real estate professional. Not at all. So you definitely want to do that and you want to make sure that your interest is protected. All right? All right, I have some, I have a, some callers coming in now. I'm ready to take some calls. Thanks for tuning in, Miss Beverly. Constance, thank you for tuning in. Appreciate you. Blue Daisy, thanks for tuning in. Yes, hello. Good morning. Hey, good morning. Thanks for calling in. It's KJ Johnson. How may I help you today? Hey, I'm KJ Johnson. Um, what my question is, um, I guess what are the effects of filing bankruptcy? I filed bankruptcy, but I've reached past my two year um discharge date. Are there any programs that people who file for bankruptcy can take part of as far as two years or do they have to wait longer than that? Well, you said you've passed your two year mark already? Yes. Well, congratulations. That's it. That's it. Once you pass your two-year mark, you qualify all over again. Ladies and gentlemen, her question was she filed for bankruptcy, and she wanted to know what and when she could buy. That's correct. Two years for FHA. You qualify for the programs. You qualify to do an FHA loan. So you're absolutely ready at this, at this point, at this juncture. 
So we would love to work with you. How soon are you looking to buy? Um, I think I, I have a couple of struggles, and I probably would definitely would like to, I guess, sit down and talk to you about my unique situation. Okay. But um, I'm definitely looking to buy... Um, I mean, whenever I, you see me fit to buy, like I really want to buy now, but I know it's probably the struggles that I would need to overcome um, before being ready. But I'm definitely um, trying to figure out the process and the next step to, you know, go forward. Well, listen, let me just share this with you. Nobody had more struggles than me. I think. My, listen, when I applied for my mortgage, I think Homeland Security was created because I applied for a mortgage. <laughs> my credit was terrible, right? And I didn't have anyone to help me. And, 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 and here's the classic line. They, they pull your credit and they say, wait six months and come back. Wait six months and come back. And no one gives you a plan in six months. In six months, they didn't forgot about exactly. you. You call them and they don't have exactly. a game plan for you. But we will customize a strategy for you, okay? So you're not alone. Definitely. The fact that you filed for bankruptcy, we embrace that. Um, you have my number. Uh, text me at the conclusion of the workshop. Um, I still would like you to apply so we can get an idea of what's on your credit, and then we're going to come up sure. with a strategy. If you follow that, um, if you need credit repair, we can get you signed up for that as well, and we can get you on the path to uh, getting your score where it needs to be, finding your resources and home ownership. So um, 443-744-5280, I want to hear from you. Let's, let's make it happen. All right. Sure will. Thanks. I am delivered. Yeah. You will be delivered. <laughs> okay, so uh, my my in, my engineer is full of jokes this morning. <laughs> Big shout out to uh, Marcus Nichols. He's a great guy. If you guys need a studio, uh, graphic designs, anything like that, DJ, oh, man, he's an awesome DJ. I taught him everything he know. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I knew nothing about DJing. All right, uh, next caller, please. Hi, this is Camille. Hey, Miss Camille. How you doing? Thanks for tuning in today. I'm good in yourself. I'm doing good. I'm hanging in there. How you making out with all this COVID stuff going on? You staying corona-free? Yes, I am. Praise Jesus. Okay, how may I help you today? So I'm, I wanted to ask, so if you have a house that you are currently you currently own your paying on, but it makes more sense to rent that house versus to sell it because of the high demand on it and the area in which you're in. Would you still qualify for these new home buyer programs? Unfortunately, as long as you have a home in your name, you won't qualify. But so you would have to okay. sell it in order for you to qualify. Okay. Now, won't you text me because I may be able to look into something for you. Uh, it's a hundred percent finance, and it's not necessarily a program, but I have a relationship with one of my lenders that may do a hundred percent financing for you. But I'll just have to just call and run past your scenario. And if 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 the answer to that question is no, then um, yeah, you would have to sell it. And um, if 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 it's a good rental opportunity, then it's probably a good equity opportunity for you as well. You know, sometimes mm -hmm. people contact me about getting into real estate investing, and they, they start off with a whole lot of rent. Rent, when you do that, you have debt. There's a lot of debt. So I encourage people before they get into any type of renting to s s flip and sell their first three or four houses. Take that equity from those houses and put it into your business account, and now you have capital. So that's what I would say. If you could sell your home, ma'am, and you can make equity off of it, um, let's take that money and find your investment property that you can rent out for prop for, for for high for a high profit, you know. Okay. All right. So, um, but we're here for okay, you. I would. All right. That sounds awesome. And then my next question: How much do student loans actually affect your ability to get into a house? Very, very good question. Um, there's a lot of talk around that. And there are um, programs that can help you as long as you have it in deferment. There are programs that will help pay off your student loans. So I would say to sit down with our mortgage professional, let them know exactly what your scenario is because he can run it against some of the programs that I didn't even get a chance to discuss today. But, it, you know, there are definitely resources out there for you. Okay, awesome. Thank you so much, KJ. Hey, thank you for calling in and thank you for tuning in. God bless you, okay? God bless you too. All right, bye-bye. Bye -bye. All right, I have another caller. I think I'm going to call this webinar the K.J. Johnson Show. <laughs> Thank you for tuning in. It's K.J. Johnson. May I help you? 
Hello. Thanks for tuning in. This is KJ Johnson. Hi, this is Charlotte. I think I'm next. Hey, how you doing? Hi, I think you've already taken my... I think I'm in the queue. Okay, how may I help you today? Uh, um, I, I wanted to pose a question to KJ Johnson. I'm attending a webinar right now. Yep, that's me. You're, you're live. Oh, sorry, you're li- you're you? live. You're live on now. This is your this is your season. It's your time. <laughs> what was your question you okay. had for Hi. us? Okay. Hi. I'm. I'm. This is Charlotte. Hi, Miss Charlotte. How you doing, doing today? I'm doing well in yourself. Good. 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 <laughs> okay. I think there's there's there are two 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 um, somehow two connections going on. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, ma'am. Okay, so my question, thank you very much for this very informative uh, webinar. Oh, um, thank you. Oh, the question, I have two questions. The first one being, um, if having had a previous foreclosure um, would be a, ne- a negative implication on um, uh, the home buying process. No, ma'am. Uh, life happens to people, and um, we have made allowances, and, and, and the financial institution have made allowances. Listen, guys, don't beat yourself up. Walt Disney filed bankruptcy 13 times before he drew Mickey Mouse, okay? Uh, we have uh-huh. billionaires that filed bankruptcy, and they still can, you know, purchase and do business. So, yes, as long as you've if you had a foreclosure and it's after three years, you're good to go, okay? As long as it's three years or older. You're, you'll qualify for all the first-time home buyer programs as well. Okay, and then the other question is, um, is having outstanding um um, uh, tax payments um, or tax returns, would that be a, a, a problem with the home buying process? Well, you want to uh, make sure that you file your taxes because the lender is going to look for your most recent two years tax returns. But if you have an, a tax obligation, all you have to do is make sure you're on an arrangement and that you make three payments and you've made three timely payments, and as long as you've made three timely payments, you know, you're, you're good to go. That's not going to be an option for you, a, a problem for you at all. Okay, okay, that sounds great. That's very, um, sounds very hopeful. Um, okay, and then um, actually I said two questions, but the very, very last one is, um, are <laughs> there any, because I'm, uh, I'm very impressed by, by your webinar and the uh, amount of information that you have in your years of of experience in the business, um, so Thank I definitely you. want to reach out um, and and connect and you know get started with the process. Um, Absolutely. And so, are there any upfront fees to to get connected with you and, and start this process? No, no. Very, very good question. My my my, my fees are free until you go to settlement. <laughs> and once okay. you go to settlement, the seller actually pays us. You know, I mean, sometimes there's an admin fee, but we we include that into the closing costs we get from the seller. So if you can hire me and, and, and send the seller the bill. <laughs> okay. All right. And, and listen, you can good. ask as many questions okay. as you like, man. If you have you have an, if you have anything else you can, you want to discuss, we're live. It's your time. You, you're not limited to three questions. Do you have anything else you want to ask me? This is your time. Okay. All right. Well, that's, though, those are it for now, but I'm going to continue listening and um, – collecting information from other callers, and I may actually come up with uh, more questions All right. before the, the seminar is over. Thank you very much, and I look forward to connecting with you soon. I look forward to connecting with you as well, okay? Thank you. Uh, thank God, ble- you. God bless. Stay corona God free. bless you as well. All right. Thank, thank you, man. Thanks, KJ. Uh-huh. Thank you. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. All right. Do I have any more callers coming in for us? Anybody else want to call? We'll give a couple of minutes, all right? And while we're waiting... um. For another caller to come in, we were talking about new construction, and um, I want to also talk about just it's where we are in the state of our country uh, with this whole coronavirus going on. Uh, you may experience some delays in your settlement because they have to do title work. They have to get lien sheets. They have to go to the city and the county to get uh, information that's going to be crucial for your purchase so you have to be a sponge as you're going through this process even if you're on the selling side or the buying side all right some you know uh, this evil virus have changed our lives um rest in peace to all of those that have been affected by it 
Um, I've lost uh, friends and family members, and I'm pretty sure you have as well. And we're just in a real difficult time, and it's affecting our industry. Now, believe it or not, more homes are selling now in this market than they have sold uh, sold in, in the past two years, since they've sold in the past two years. Interest rates are at a historically low number, okay? And uh, let's talk about types of financing, and that's going to conclude the the workshop in its entirety. So you have FHA, and then you have conventional, okay? FHA normally requires 3.5% down. Conventional can be 100% financing up to 20% down, all right? So when you get approved for these programs, you can actually use it with conventional or FHA. And I encourage you to have your loan officer run the scenarios because just because your interest rate is a little higher doesn't mean your payment is going to be higher. All right? So that's going to, um, yeah, so don't get too hung up on w- what your interest rate is because your interest rate is going to be a little higher if you use a program. But if you put your own money down, you can get a 2.7% interest rate. I think the lowest I've seen a, a client's going to sell them, she, got a, she has a 2.3% interest rate on a house. Her house is like $500,000. She's paying like $2,500 a month. <laughs> I mean, normally you would see on a house like that $3,300, $3,400. So she's like $2,500. So if you, if you didn't want to use a program and you wanted to get a lower interest rate, you could borrow from your 401K. You could borrow from your thrift savings. And we can discuss uh, uh, some type of credit where the lender will give you money in the back end uh, towards your closing costs, maybe up to five or seven thousand dollars, depending on the scenario, so that you can get a lower interest rate. Because I think if this coronavirus keeps up and the rates keep dropping, we may see one point something percent interest rates on the mortgage, and we've never seen that in eighty years. All right, so that's going to conclude the webinar for today. I thank you all for tuning in. Okay, you can re uh, see this thing live on my page, and my engineer saying it's going to be on YouTube, and I'll text you that information when it's available. And uh, my number again is 443-744-5280. Until we meet or talk again, I pray the blessings of the Lord will keep you during this very difficult time we have in our country. I pray that the blood of Jesus will protect you and your family, and I look forward to meeting and connecting with you guys and helping you through your um, real estate needs. And hopefully, before the year is out, if this thing doesn't get any worse, we can get another crab feast in because that's what I want to do, a crab feast. But I ain't trying to get no crab and no corona. <laughs> so I hope this thing can subside some so we can all get together and have some fun. All right? Until, then, until we meet again, K.J. Johnson, your trusted real estate professional, signing off. Have a great day. My whole album. <laughs> hey. Hello? Hello? Hey, this is KJ. How may I help you today? Hi, KJ. Hi, good morning. Good morning. Um, I have a question. Sure. If you owe on um on 